Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for a brand new video here with me, Tea Addict. Today we are continuing on our Sims 2 custom content series and I tried to record this video for you guys last week and it ended up being like an hour and a half long. So I was like, oopsie. And I realized that I need to cut things down a little smaller, do things in a little bit more piecemeal. So today what we're gonna be doing is talking about some tools that you can use and you should use for downloading and organizing or handling your custom content for The Sims 2. Those tools are the custom content merger, the custom content compressorizer, and we're also gonna cover a bonus tool which is the bulk rename utility. Um, you will know if you've been watching this series so far that I'm very passionate about naming conventions. Mm, let's use the word passionate. Yeah, that makes it sound slightly better. Yeah, uh, and the bulk rename utility can really help you to keep things consistent and to rename all your files a lot quicker and a lot easier than uh, renaming things one by one. So we're going to go through all of that today. And what we're going to do is I'm also going to talk to you about recolors for Maxis objects in The Sims 2. And that's sort of the example I'm going to give you for how to use all of these tools. So I hope you've all got a nice hot cup of tea ready for today's video. We have a Lot to cover so let's jump in and get started. So today we're actually going to start on our desktop and you'll, I want you guys to create two folders on your desktop. One that is called merge or to merge or sims 2 cc merging or something along the lines of merging and another folder that has something to do with compress or to compress, uh, compressorizer, whatever you want to call it. But you want these two folders to merge and to compress because basically whenever you download anything and put it into your sims 2 game from now on I want you to merge it and compress it. Uh, the only exception to that is if you download something and you're not entirely sure if you want it, go ahead and load it up and test it out and then merge and compress it. But uh, yeah, I want you to put these folders on your desktop to merge and to compress. Then if you open up your Sims 2 My Documents EA Games folder in downloads, we're going to add a new folder today and we're going to call it uh, by recolors. Oops. Where are my caps? I don't know why I like capitals so much, but I really do. Okay, then we can also make another new folder for build recolors. Now in my mega folder of Doom, I, I have um, one folder with buy mode recolors. It's just called like Maxis recolors. And then build mode recolors, I tend to just store in other build mode folders, but I actually, and meaning to sort of go through and reorganize that because I would actually prefer it to be separated this way. So we're gonna um, be downloading some recolors today and I'm gonna show you how to uh, merge and compress them so that when you download recolors for an object, instead of having 100 recolor files, you have one recolor file. Why do we wanna do that? Load speeds. If you have less files for your game to load, it will load faster. Um, compressing things also keep, uh, stores room on your hard drive. And that's really helpful when you're a custom content addict like me, because then I can fit more things in my downloads folder. So like my mega folder of Doom right now is like, I don't know, maybe 15 gigabytes of custom content. Let's actually take a look. Yeah, 15 gigabytes of CC in the mega folder of Doom custom content folder. If I did not have this merged and compressed, this would probably easily be closer to 20, I would say. Merging and compressing can really save a lot of room on your hard drive. And in my opinion, it makes the game run a lot faster and smoother. Uh, you'll also see it contains 10,987 files and 374 folders. Before I merged and compressed, this would have been a crap ton more. If I actually take a look back at one of my very old archives of Sims 2 downloads before I reorganized and merged and compressed it, Okay, so we have this backup back back in like 2020 uh, from before merging, right? So let's take a look at this. So 2020 was when I first discovered merging and compressing thanks to Bella Dover's video. She has a great tutorial on merging and compressing and organizing custom content. We're, we are gonna be covering a lot of the same things today, just I guess with uh, my spin on it, the tea addict, <laughs> the tea addict spin, the tea addict flavor, I don't know. This is taking a little while to calculate how much is in here because this is on my backup drive, so. Okay, so we're only at six gig so far. I know there's more than that. We're already at 24, 25,000 files, 1,500 folders. I'm actually really curious to see where this ends up. Okay, so it's ended up at 11.2 gigabytes with 42,475 files at 2,096 folders. And this backup doesn't actually include any mods. This is um, 
yeah, so my new one, which also has uh, mods in it, if we just take another look at this, 10,987 files compared to, yeah, 42,475. So this is the difference that merging and compressing custom content can make. Um, and if you can imagine the difference in load time between these two folders, it's quite huge. It's quite vast. It's quite impressive. So yeah, that's why we want to merge and compress things. So to get started, of course, we're going to need to download these tools if you don't have them already. So if you head to Google and type in like Sims 2 Merge Tool or Sims 2 Compressorizer, you will find links to those. Um, and I have the versions by Lazy Duchess. So Lazy Duchess did the CC merger. I don't know if anyone had done this before Lazy Duchess did. Um, and this is, yeah, so this, this is the program that we're going to use to combine our files from thousands and thousands and thousands of files into a lot less files. So you want to go ahead, jump on this website and the download button is here. So you download the GitHub release. And then the compressorizer was originally by Jfade. Um, so if you search Sims 2 compressorizer, uh, the first link is actually for DJS Sims. Uh, and this is originally where this tool was from. I have this version by Lazy Duchess, which was upgraded. So it doesn't error out with uh, file path limits. And then recently uh, someone actually updated the compressorizer again. Um, I think it's on Mod The Sims um, and apparently it's faster. I haven't got that version yet. I haven't tried it out. I'm sure it's fine, but uh, just if you want to follow along with exactly what I have and exactly what I do, this is the one I use. And the download here, there's a link for Patreon or Sim File Share. So you can go ahead and uh, grab this and you can compress everything, okay? You can compress mods, you can compress all the different files in your game with nothing to worry about. If you then go ahead and edit the files within CPE, you do want to recompress them, but there is no limits in my, to my knowledge, um, to what you can and can't compress. Merging is a little bit more complicated than that. There are some things that don't like to be merged unless you pay them some very special attention. You never want to merge mods is, is my understanding. Um, I don't think anyone advises merging mod files together. Um, and then, there's a couple of things we'll go through that I have found don't like to be merged. And there's a couple of things that if you do want to merge them, you have to uh, do some SimPE wizardry to make them work, which honestly, I have never actually tried and got my head around yet, <laughs> but uh, maybe in a future video. So yeah, go ahead and get these two tools. Now, the next thing I recommend is in your My Documents, have a folder for your Sims tools. So I have Sims tools in here and I also have it pinned to my quick access. And then I've got Sims 2 tools and these are uh, a lot of different Sims 2 tools that I have. So there are a lot out there and we're only going through just a couple of them today. Um, but so go ahead and put your, pop your downloaded files in here. So here's the compressorizer for me and then CC merger is up here. Um, so when you download them, there's this is the .exe, this is the actual program here for the CC merger. And then in the compressorizer, we have down the bottom here, the compressorizer.exe. This is the application file, the program uh, to run the compressorizer. And then what I recommend doing is once you've got these little programs in your Sims 2 tools folder, um, go ahead and run them and pin them to your taskbar. So you can see down here, um, I've got these two icons here. This is the merger. This is the compressor. If I go ahead and open this, it'll open on the taskbar. You can just right click it and say pin to taskbar. So then um, whenever I'm merging and compressing, downloading custom content, etc., um, I can just easily click these buttons to run these little programs because I use these all the time. So if you are merging and compressing, downloading custom content a lot, you, you want to have these on your taskbar. Otherwise you have to go in and open them manually every time. And it's just way too much fuss and bother. This will really speed up your whole, uh, your process, I guess, for downloading custom content. Uh, another little program that we are going to go through today, which I mentioned is the bulk rename utility. This one is not associated with the Sims. This is just a, a general program that you can use, you know, for anything on your computer. But if you just Google bulk rename utility, you'll find this link and you can go ahead, download and install that one. And I will go through that with you guys in a little while.
Right, so I mentioned that today's example is going to involve downloading recolors for things and this is where I recommend sort of going to after you have downloaded default replacements. If you're trying to build a downloads folder is to next step, go ahead and start downloading a couple of recolors for the Maxis items. The Maxis items, you know, it's funny, we get really mad at The Sims 4 for not having many swatches. <laughs> But like some of the Sims 2 items really did not have a lot of swatches <laughs> when they were when they were released. So recolors basically just give you extra swatches uh, for the Maxis content. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting some extra recolors for your Sims 2 content. Um, for example, getting some pure black and pure white recolors for the kitchen appliances or the bathroom plumbing for me is like an essential like I hate those yellow stoves. I hate them with a passion. But uh, a lot of the items in The Sims 2 also originally weren't actually able to be recolored or say you could recolor the object as a whole, but then you'll notice that other objects, you can recolor parts of it separately. Um, what that means is that some objects will have one recolorable subset, that's the official terminology, whereas other items will have two recolorable subsets. Two is the maximum you can have in The Sims 2, unfortunately. And you will know that from when you click on an item and there's two different sort of rows of things that you can recolor. So the next thing I want you guys to take a look at is The Sims 2 CEP, the color enable package. I highly recommend downloading this guy. And what this does is it, it unlocks a lot more objects to be recolorable and it also unlocks extra recolorable subsets on a lot of the Maxis items. So the color, uh, the CEP, this was created by Numenor. It is an old download. Uh, May 2009 was the last update, but it's still 100% what you need. And basically to install this thing, I highly recommend just downloading this file here, which is the CEP Windows Auto Installer, or if you have Mac, um, you will need to do a manual installation and the instructions for how to do that is here on the main page. But if you're on Windows, I highly recommend just get the audio installer. It'll put all the files everywhere they need to be. If you do need to be a little bit more uh, precise about it, there's instructions for how to install here including manual instructions for the ultimate collection. Um, and what the CEP will do, so if you download this, it'll go CEP setup.exe. Here's your little program. So you can go ahead and run this. And what it will do is it will create two different uh, folders, new folders for you in your Sims 2 directories, as well as add in a couple of extra special files. So to go through it, you just go, uh, go ahead, accept the agreement, which you definitely read every word of. Setup will install the CEP documentation into the following folder. Sure, that's fine. Um, and then, so here we go. Which components do you want to install or uninstall? So for me, I'm not gonna do this because it might go ahead and actually uninstall my CEP, which I don't want. But so you can go for a full installation, a compact or a custom installation, oopsie. Um, I highly recommend if you haven't got this, just go for the full installation and it's going to basically install a bunch of recolorable subsets for The Sims 2. And then after you have it installed, if you go into the uh, My Documents EA Games Sims 2 folder, you're going to find a new folder here called CEP Extra. This is one of the folders it installs. It also installs a folder into your game install location. So this will be different depending on which version of the game you're running. But if you are, if you have the ultimate collection or the full collection, if you go into the base folder, um, TS data resource uh, catalog, and then there's another folder here called CEP Extra. So this is important to know that there are two different CEP locations um, because the CEP program will by itself install a bunch of CEP files, but then online other creators have also made a lot of extra CEP files. One name that comes to mind for, for sure is uh, Huge Lunatic. Uh, if I go mod the Sims. So if we take a look through uh, Huge Lunatic's downloads, you can see here she's uh, got a lot of files with a CEP extra tag on them. CEP extra, CEP extra, and basically all of these fi files, or a lot of these files, will come with not one file but two. And when you install them, um, you will need to put one file in My Documents and another file in program files. So this one here would go in my documents and this one, which says P files, would go into program files. And there's a lot of different creators who have made extra CEPs. Huge Lunatic is just one example, but it is important to know that you've got 
two different locations where there is a CEP folder and sometimes you need to put files in both locations. Do you have to have CEP to make recolors work? I don't think so. Is it very highly recommended? Yes, most definitely. <laughs> most, the, the highest number of CEP files that I have relate to paintings, like Maxis paintings, because a lot of the Maxis paintings were not originally recolorable or only had one subset, so you could only recolor the painting as a whole. And what CEP does is it makes it so you can for example, recolor the frame separately to the picture inside the frame. So CEP is a game changer. It's brilliant. I love it. But okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual process that I recommend for downloading and installing custom content through the merger and the compressorizer. And as I said, the example we're going to use today is recolors. So um, the example I gave before is a great one, I feel. So if we go for Sims 2 white appliances, <laughs> this is like an essential for me, honestly. And uh, we open up our images tab because we, I always open up the images tab to see what options I've got. And you can see there's a couple of different uh, download links here. This one looks like not only white, but also maybe gray and black is included, which could be fun. Uh, these ones are looking quite nice, white appliances here. So let's go ahead and see who did this. It's the same link. So this is by Liz. Liz is a really, really awesome recolor artist that here on Mod The Sims. Um, so Liz is a big one. Michelle is the other major one that, uh, as I mentioned, I think in our last video, you'll get to know the name Michelle. And yes, so this one with white, black and gray, this one's actually by Michelle. Um, and it looks like it's very, looks like it covers a lot of items too, which is really nice. But yeah, so say we were sick of yellow stoves, which we all should be if we're Sims 2 players, and we decide to come in here and we want, we're like, yes, let's get these brand new, really nice looking black, gray, and white recolors for the base game appliances. Um, so if we take a look at this picture here, it looks like it does all of the, or well, these three stoves, whereas Liz's download looks like it actually does more of the stoves. Mm -hmm. This one only does these two fridges, whereas Liz's looks like it does more of the fridges. Okay. And then the dishwasher tra compact, trash compactor and the other dishwasher. So it actually looks like Liz's download includes more of the objects. But what we could do is probably just get all of them. If we go to the download tab, we can um, pick and choose which ones we want. And to download these, you just click on them. Super duper easy and steel and black close that and then let's get liz's white appliances as well and then if we open up these zip files we can actually take a look at uh, what liz has done versus what michelle has done so what you could do if you were really picky is you could actually sort of try to compare file names and try to figure out um which one's which, and you can only include one version of the white recolors if you want to. Uh, for me, that's way too much effort. Oh, I'd prefer to just have two options for white recolors for the object. So, oopsie, I just accidentally closed that. But so what we're gonna do is, first of all, open up our to merge folder. And first I'm gonna do Liz's files here. So I'm going to just highlight them all, click and drag over into my to merge folder. I'm gonna close that zip file. Now, if you want to, you can keep a backup of everything unmerged. It is a good idea. And if you already have a downloads folder and then you've decided to start merging and compressing what you've already got, keep your unmerged backup just in case things don't want to be merged. Recolors in general are very, very safe to merge. I've never had recolors be like, I don't want to be merged. I'm not going to work now. Objects can do that, but recolors very, very safe. So once you've got them in here into the to merge folder, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up CC Merger. If you haven't run this program before, the first thing you need to do is select the directory with CC to merge. So I have mine pointed to the folder on my desktop called to merge. Uh, if you need to go ahead, set that up manually, you just click on the browse button and then you find your folder, your splash folder, um, your temp folder, whatever it is that you've got here for what you want to merge. Then we're going to just leave all these values as is. Um, you can fiddle with them if you want to, but I find that these values always work really well. Then we're going to go ahead and hit merge. Now we need to give our package a file name. So this is where we need to have a think about 
naming conventions and how exactly we want to sort out how we store our recolors. So in here, I have got one big folder for buy recolors. So I need to have a think about, okay, how am I going to make it easy for me to navigate inside this folder? How am I going to make it easy for myself to work out what's what, what are recolors of what objects? Because if you ever need to edit recolors, delete things, add things, if you ever need to sort through your recolor files for whatever reason, it's really helpful to have them organized. So my personal naming convention for recolor files, if I get a notepad open, is I start with the category and then underscore description. Is that how you spell description? Yeah. And then creator name. Recolors. And I always use RCs for recolors. And then the last thing I'll say is merged. Okay, so category, description, creator name, recolors, merged. So in this example, I would go for apply. I could write out the whole word appliances or I could just go apply. That makes sense to me. I can read that and be like, oh yeah, it's appliances. So I'm going to say, so these are the Liz ones. So white appliances underscore Liz recolors merged. Yep, makes sense to me. Okay. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to have our to compress folder open or you can just drag it in on the desktop and I'm going to drag this new merged folder over into my to compress folder. Then I'm going to highlight all this and I'm going to delete it. So then next of all, we've got uh, Michelle's recolors of the base game appliances and we've got three different colors here. So you could do this in two different ways. You could either merge everything together by color. So for example, I could put in the steel ones, I could merge this and I could say uh, appliance base game uh, steel Michelle recolors merged and I could do it like that and that will cut down uh, 17 files into one which is pretty good the other way I could do it and probably the way that I would do it to be honest is I'd actually put the steel the white and the black all in together. And then I would say merge and I would just go appliances, uh, base game, uh, basic colors, Michelle merged and hit save. And then that is still going to put everything into one file, which you can see here. And this time I've cut it down from 42 files into one. So it's really up to you how you want to merge things. If you want to just, you know, put every recolor that you have by five different creators into one file and just merge it all together in one big go, you could do that. So I could have merged Liz's and Michelle's together and I could have made this one file, which was just uh, appliances, basic colors, Michelle, Liz merged, something like that. Um, or you can keep it separated into creators like I did here. It's really sort of your preference. I think from my experience, it's better to have them by creator, just in case you decide that you don't like a particular re uh, don't like a particular creator's recolors anymore. So then after this, uh, we could keep searching for some more recolors for the appliances if we wanted to. Like uh, we could say Sims 2 appliance uh, recolors. Say, for example, we like to play in color and we don't ever actually want everything to be black and white. So let's take a look here. We've got, uh, this one looks quite bright and colorful. Uh, this one looks quite bright and colorful. Okay, so this website, this is uh, simfinds.com. I don't like this website. This website bugs the crap out of me because when you open something in here, it'll say where it's from. Um, but then if you try to go to that website that it's actually from, it will just keep redirecting to itself. <laughs> <laughs> it just bugs me. So it's like if you click on this, it'll redirect to like, oh, here's what else you can get off of Mod The Sims rather than just going to the download page. It's very, very annoying. <laughs> but these uh, these are more base game kitchen appliance recolors by Michelle. So this is by Michelle again. And if we click on the pictures, we can see that she's done base game appliances, not only in black, white and steel. She's also done them in hot pink, 
purple, <laughs> uh, green, blue. So if you are a player who likes to play with lots and lots of colors, you can also totally download stuff like this, which is a lot of fun. Um, I actually like here that the barbecue has been recolored. I think that's really nice. So we could just download that. But so to actually download this, you want to hit this download button here. Um, because if you, or you could try searching for it separately and try to actually get to mod the Sims. Um, because yeah, this, this website just drives me nuts. So these recolors, um, so this is by Autumn Rose Sims and these are all the free time kitchen appliances in the Anna and Lua colors. So Anna's color palette, I mentioned in a previous video. Uh, so Anna's, Anna's colors is a very common color scheme that you will find with recolors. So if you wanted to go ahead and download these, you could go ahead and hit this download button. We have to wait because we're not a premium member. Another reason that this uh, website bugs the crap out of me. And then it actually takes me over to here. So annoying. <laughs> um, so we could download them separately if we want just Anna's colors or Lua's colors. And uh, often you'll find with these kinds of downloads, so this is uh, a Tumblr here, that they might also include a swatch. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Yeah, so we've got Anna swatch. So you can kind of see here um, the, whoa, Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. You can see here the colors that these appliances are gonna come in. And uh, getting stuff in Anna's colors or in particular color palettes is a really nice way of keeping your game uh, looking unified. So say you wanna do like a not so berry challenge in The Sims 2 and you wanna use Anna's colors for the basis of your not so berry challenge, you can totally do that because a lot of people have done recolors in Anna's colors. And a lot of people have done like wallpapers and flooring and everything in these kinds of color palettes. Uh, which can be really a really nice way of, yeah, just having everything look quite unified. Um, so, and then this is Lua's colors that we have over here. So you could keep all of these. You could just keep some of these. Um, for today, let's go ahead and get Anna's colors as well, just because why not? And uh, so what I will do is uh, just pop all of these. And I'm using Control A to quickly select all. So so many recolors, man. This would have taken a while. <laughs> Put all of these into my to merge folder. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna open the merger. I'm gonna say merge. This time I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, free time appliances. Autumn uh, recolors. Anna merged. That's a pretty long file name. I wonder if I can, uh, actually I might nix the word appliances. So, um, always, you always do want to try to be keeping your file name shorter. Again, those load times. So appliance, free time, autumn, uh, recolors, Anna, Anna colors. Maybe we'll go, yeah, Anna Coles merged. There we go. And that's pretty clear what that is. Um, and so this time we've actually ended up with two files instead of, 243. We love merging. And now we're going to move over to step two, which is to actually compress these files. So let's open up the compressorizer. If you wanted to keep searching for more appliance recolors, you totally could, but let's move on for now. So the compressorizer eats Sims for breakfast. And what we want to do here is first of all, click add files to list. Then we want to navigate to, to compress. This is why I put the folders on the desktop. So it's super quick, <laughs> really easy to find this folder. We're going to hit okay. It's going to load up our files and it's going to give us the before size in kilobytes. Um, we can say go. And it's going to start working its way through trying to compress these and seeing if it can save any space within the uh, the package files. Sometimes it will, sometimes it'll save stacks of space, sometimes it won't. It depends if the original creator compressed their items before they put them online for upload. A lot of creators nowadays do uh, compress things before they share them. Um, so yeah, I think in this I think in this example, it's not actually going to save any space. That's okay. At least we've made sure it is as small as it can be. Other times I've run things through the compressorizer and I have saved so much space. And, um, you know, sometimes it's only a couple of kilobytes here and there, but every little bit adds up. So next of all, we can actually finally go ahead and put these into our downloads folder. So I'm going to go into buy recolors and I'm going to pop those into there. 
Now, one quirk with the merger that you will notice is that it tends to always add a zero to the end of whatever you put in as your file name. So you'll remember that the file name that I put in was this. And by the way, if you go ahead and decide that you want to uh, change the file names after the fact, you totally can. It's not going to break anything. Yeah, so it'll always add a zero to the end because sometimes it will merge things into more than one package. So in that case, in the case of well, the Audemars recolors, we got merged O and then merged one. Sometimes you'll also get merged two, merged three, merged four, so on. Um, so that's why there's numbers there. So now what we could do is we could go ahead and load up the game and take a look at our new appliance recolors. Okay, so here we are in uh, our test hood in Customville. We have a lady who lives on this lot now, Lady Tester. She's great. She's been digging holes and getting computers and bills and stuff. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our appliances. So uh, this stove, for example, originally comes in these colors, green, mustard. Uh, let's actually put it down. So yeah, pale green. <laughs> Uh, pink, orange, yellow, and mustard. We now have this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we do have two versions of white. They are actually slightly different, which is kind of fun. And then we have the black and the steel. This one will be very similar, I would say. So originally it came in this kind of not quite white color and this black color. So we now have this one, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, I wonder if this one has been included. No, this one is a different stove, so we haven't actually downloaded any recolors for this stove. So this would be something I'd probably do next, is look at finding recolors for this stove in particular. How I would do that would be to open Google and actually search for uh, shiny... What was it called? Shiny time? Yeah, T-Y-M-E, right. Shiny time cook top recolors. And then, yeah, I'd probably start finding a lot of recolors for these. So Michelle has done a bunch which you can see here and it looks like it also does the counters that match this stove so that'd be good yeah i'd probably go back to google and start looking for some recolors of that one that's okay the cowpoke stove let's take a look at this one um so it originally came in yellow pink uh blue and green we now have it in pure white thanks to that's the liz recolor this one is saying it's not designable, so I'll have to take a look into why that one is not designable. That's okay. Uh, the barbecue we didn't get any recolors for yet, so I'd potentially look for some of that. You got feet stove. <laughs> we don't have any recolors for, so that'd be another one to search for. And then this one here, I believe, is the kitchen and bath one. So this one, we should have a ton of recolors for now. So originally it came in green, blue, reddish is that red, more red or pink? I don't know. Red, I'll call it, and like silver. So we've now got it in yellow, white, light blue, that green, that red, pinks, purples. This is the one we got Anna's colors for. So we now have a lot of red colors for our stove here. <laughs> Probably more than we really need, but hey, it's a bit of fun. Uh, so that's really nice. And then this one, Fire em Up Sleek Sensations, we just have a plain white red color of. Similarly, if we look through our fridges, let's pull these guys out and see what we got for these. Now, Sim wanted a fridge, didn't she? So we've now got a different version of a white recolor. So originally it sort of looked like that. Now it's all clean. Uh, this one we don't have any recolors for. This is like the, the warnable fridge. This is the really messy one. So it doesn't look like we got any for that one. But I'd say this one, the Eco, Econo Cool, we certainly did. We got black, white, grey, and another white. Uh, the Chow Time Bovinia refrigerator model brr originally came in a couple of different like woods, which is interesting. Some different uh, steel finishes, and we now have white and grey and black. This one we just have now in white as well, this Romantic Notions fridge. This one I think is the free time fridge. Yep, so this one we now have all of Annex colors for. And then this one we also now have in a nice white recolor. So that's a really nice way to get started with uh, fleshing out your downloads folder is making it so that, for example, this stove, which you might never use otherwise because it doesn't come in white, now comes in white. <laughs> so it's a lot easier to bring yourself to use this stove. So um, yeah, recolors are a win. Recolors are very, very nice. Um, in my opinion, the things that need recoloring the most, as I said, are the appliances, the bathroom stuff. Like seriously, why is there not an actual white version of this toilet? Why is it this like off white cream yicky, yicky color? I don't know. <laughs> and also the windows, windows and doors uh, really need a lot of recolor help in my opinion. Um, if we take a look at, oh, what's the one that really bugs me? I think it's this one. 
yeah this window right here this is a really cute window it's got this like little flower box on it and stuff but it only like the outside of it only comes in these three colors which makes me sad and then the other side of it comes in these colors which we get a few more but still not a whole heck of a lot so uh yeah I do recommend as the next step in putting together your downloads folder after you go through and default replace some things, go ahead and start searching for some recolors. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are some things that I have come across that do not like to be merged or some things that you need to pay special attention to if you want to merge them. Those things are neighborhood decoration objects and fences. Those two objects, if you want to merge those, you need to go into the SIMPE file afterwards and edit certain values. Huge Lunatic has a detailed tutorial on how to do that. I have never tried it. I need to get around to trying it, but uh, I might cover that in a future video for you guys if you would be interested in seeing that. Other times what will happen is that you will merge something and then it will turn invisible inside your game. And I'll give you an example of this. All right, so here we are inside my mega folder of doom and I happen to know that I have one couch that I need to sort out because it didn't like getting merged. And it's uh, this one right here. The Arizona Love Seat by Holy Samoli. For some reason, when I merged this one, it turned invisible. I don't know why. <laughs> and I don't know exactly why some things don't like getting merged, whereas other things are fine with it. Um, yeah, I, I have no answers. I'm not a programmer. I'm not a coder, but sometimes you will merge something and uh, here's the sofa, right? So the sofa is here and then this is meant to be the two tile version. I believe these are actually like merged together. So I have literally no idea why one works and another doesn't. It might be that I need to rename something within this MPE file, but yeah, sometimes you just find that things don't like to get merged. They turn invisible. So do just test regularly as you're going through and merging your content and make sure that it's, it continues to work. Other times, if you merge something incorrectly, um, it may cause your game to crash. I have had that happen before. I've tried to merge something and the game crashes. So do watch out for that too. Um, I think that's fairly unlikely to be honest, but yeah, just take, take a moment to check every now and then as you go through merging and compressing and installing in custom content. And that way you won't have any issues, hopefully. Other things that you shouldn't merge are collection files. Now this is a big one because a lot of the time when you download something like a, P a set of custom content, a creator will include a collection file uh, with their download. When that happens, make sure to go ahead and put that collection file into your collection files folder. So in The Sims 2, there's a folder here for collections and collection folders are a whole other topic that we're gonna get into in a future video because these things are awesome. When you use these well, they are game changing. They're so good, uh, especially when you have a lot of custom content. But yeah, so if something comes with a collection, try to put it into here because if you merge the items with the with the um, collection file, things won't work. Things will disappear. Things will not. Yeah, things will not be present in your game. The collection file most certainly won't work. And my understanding is it's been a little while since I did this accidentally, but I think when you merge a collection file in with its objects, none of the objects in that file will work. <laughs> I think that's what happens. I can't quite remember, but uh, yeah, don't don't merge collection files. That's, that's not a good idea. Another thing that I've occasionally had issues with are columns. Some columns are happy to be merged, other columns not happy to be merged. So that's probably something else just to be a little bit careful with. Make sure you test regularly if you're merging columns. What I've found is that if you download some custom columns you can merge one column and its recolors together into one file, but you can't merge like lots of different columns and recolors together in one file. So say you were to download a set of custom columns by Kaylee83. Uh, Kaylee83 has a lot of conversions from The Sims 4 and you want to merge them all together and just say, you know, Kaylee83 four to two columns. You can't merge them all together. I don't think those columns will work very happily for you. I think. I know I've had issues with columns in the past, so I do tend to just be a bit careful with those. Uh, otherwise, I don't think there's much that comes to mind that I've had issues with, uh, with with merging. Hey, it's Editing Beth here. Just wanted to give you a quick bonus tip when it comes to merging stuff that will help prevent any issues with uh, merging things. If you have a set which has a master object and then a, other objects that are slaved or reposited to the master object, keep the master object separate. Don't merge it in with all of 
uh, everything else in the set. We're going to get into a lot more detail about master objects, slaved objects, repository objects, all that kind of thing in a future video when we talk about blue flashing, and which I know is a topic that a lot of people do struggle with. Um, but yeah, if you if you've got something that has a set master, just put that straight into your to compress file. Make sure it's named appropriately and move it straight into your downloads folder. You can merge all of the extra recolors, slaved objects, all of that together, but good practice, keep the master object separate. Uh, because I've just found that that works better and I have found that some things just won't work properly if the master object isn't kept separate. So good tip, uh, more information on masters, slaves and repos coming soon. So the final thing we're going to cover in today's video, I did mention at the start that I was going to show you guys the bulk rename utility. So this thing is a little bit overwhelming and confusing to look at. You might look at this and go like, holy moly, there is so much stuff here. What the heck do I do with this program? I get it. It is a little bit much. But basically what you want to know about The Sims 2 is A, you want nice short file names. B, you don't want special characters. And special characters are things like these brackets, these brackets, these brackets, hyphens, exclamation marks. I don't think you can actually have exclamation marks in file names. Uh, spaces as well. Spaces count as like a special character or will, they are also something that will slow down load times. Uh, any of like these kinds of things, like these kinds of things. You don't want to have any of these in your file names. So what you can do with bulk rename utility and what I most commonly do is say, for example, we had a bunch of files and let me see if I can actually find an example of this. Okay, so here we are in my mega folder of doom. This is my three to two traits project mods folder. So this is where I have a lot of mods for the Sims three to two traits. Uh, yeah, Sims three to two traits project. So I haven't actually come through this yet and made it fit my naming conventions. <laughs> so this window over here, by the way, this is your navigation window. So this is how we find folders and files that we want to rename. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also create a quick access folder on your desktop. But so first of all, I might look at these um, folders and go, hmm, they've got spaces in them. What can I do about that? Well, I could replace any spaces with an underscore instead. And then, so you see the old name here, and then you see a preview of the new name here. Whatever I have highlighted is what the program is going to rename. So I could just do everything and say for any spaces, I want you to re replace it with an underscore. Okay, and I could say rename, beautiful. Now we'll also notice that in here we have some hyphens as well. There's some places where there's hyphens. I don't like hyphens. So I'm now going to say replace any hyphens with an underscore instead. I'm going to leave everything highlighted and I'm going to rename. Okay. Other options that we have here in the bulk rename utility is we can remove characters. So any special characters. So I can, uh, in this remove section, section five in, in characters, I can put spacebar brackets. Uh, I can put hyphens. I can put apostrophe marks, you name it. And then if there was any of those in here, I could rename them. There's not. So that's good. I could also go ahead if I wanted to and remove entire words. <laughs> I don't know why I'd want to remove words, but so I could put any word in here that was in my files that I didn't want to have in there and I could type it in and hit rename. I can also remove characters or like letters from the, uh, the start of the file name, the end of the file name or in the middle of the file name. I could also add prefixes. So say I wanted to add a prefix to all of these for some reason of like trait mod underscore I could do that and you can see it's going to rename this with the prefix trait mod if I wanted to have um, mod inserted at position eight it would do that for me so it's going to rename all these files all at once I don't want to do that I could also add a suffix so something at the end um, again um, I could say underscore mod if I wanted to I don't want to but uh, that's an example of what we can do there. Yeah, basically it's just a really, really helpful tool for renaming lots and lots of files at once. And I have used this extensively, particularly in uh, the, my Sun and Moon Star Factory folder. Sun and Moon tend to always put in hyphens. I take the hyphens out. Um, 
a lot of older custom content as well. So newer custom content tends to be a lot more like, I guess, with it in terms of the naming conventions and not having special characters and all that kind of thing. But um, older custom content often does come with a little bit of nonsense um, and so you can easily use this to rename everything all right guys that's gonna do it for today my video is still really long i'm gonna have to try to edit this down for you all i hope that you've enjoyed this one i hope that you found this helpful if you have any comments suggestions leave them down below the video if you have any questions leave them down below the video because i'm more than happy to answer questions as always as well i have a discord uh you can pop into our discord where all there's a bunch of custom content addicts in my discord <laughs> so uh we can talk about custom content uh, merging and compressing all that kind of thing and um yeah Make sure if you are keen to see more in this video series, you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the notification bell so I know that I should keep making this series. I want to thank you all for your support on it so far. It's been doing quite well, so that's been encouraging. Next time, I think we're going to talk about different stars of custom content. We're going to have a look at Maxis add-ons uh, as a good start point for downloading CC. We're going to talk about 4 to 2 conversions. We're going to have a look at, yeah, different ways that you can flesh out your game and different aesthetics and different styles you can do. So if you're keen to see that one, uh, make sure to check back in the channel hopefully in a week or so until then guys have a great rest of your day bye for now